Stephen Sargent back at Blockchain Features Conference 2022. Vitalik has already graced the stage, but we're here to meet the real founder of Ethereum. No, just joking. We're here to meet Kunal from KPMG, fresh off a world of women NFT purchase. Kunal, tell us a little bit about yourself and how your company interacts in the digital asset world. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, Kunal Basin, I'm a director with uh, KPMG in Canada. I co lead our crypto asset and blockchain center of excellence across Canadian entity. And um, yeah, World of Women was, was a pretty recent purchase. Uh, a lot went behind it, but our goal as a firm and, and our team is to push the ecosystem forward and especially the institu institutionalization of the ecosystem. So what we have been doing is, the way I see how we can do that is connecting the three foundational pillars. The first one is the traditional institutions. We are going and telling them what the opportunities are for them and to engage with the crypto asset space. What are the risks? And how do you address those risks? How do you take advantage of those opportunities? How do you enter the market? And the second pillar is the crypto native institutions. We're telling them, if, you, if you've got to work with the traditional institutions, be prepared to answer a lot of these questions because we know a lot of crypto native firms made a lot of money. They became big in a very short amount of time. But they're not, they were not at the maturity level to engage with the institutions yet. So we're at the middle, like trying to tell both the firms what they should be looking out for. We're telling the traditional institutions, these are the questions that you should ask when you're engaging with the crypto firms. We're telling the crypto firms, this is what you should be ready or prepared to answer if you got to work with the traditional institutions. And the third pillar is the regulators. So we've been talking to the regulators for a while and educating them on what the opportunities that traditional institutions are looking into, what are the risks, and what sort of reporting requirements they should put into place for TradFi, and then telling them also about what crypto native institutions are doing, how they're engaging with the space, and what sort of regulations or guidance should be put out from, from, a, from a crypto native standpoint. That's awesome. You guys are covering all three pillars. Yes. Alex, we have you here. What can institutions or even consultancies learn about some of the risks that they might not be taking into account for when they're doing things like risk assessments and other on-chain activity? So what I would say in general is that uh, it's important to have granular checks when doing uh, compliance checks in terms of uh, anti-money laundering, terrorist financing and all the, those kinds of activities. So what I'm uh, saying here is about being able to the dry run of the transaction to assess where the assets are moving from and where they are heading to make sure that we have granular checks against sanctioned address, sanctioned persons to be able to block only the bad guys because the privacy technology is here, but it's also benefiting some other people that don't necessarily do funky stuff out there. They just want to make sure they are, uh, they are okay and private with their stuff, right? So I think it's important to have this uh, distinguish, to distinguish between these two uh, use cases. That's awesome. Now, regulators, if that's a pillar, uh, consumer protections on top of the regulators list. We've seen almost $2 billion worth of DeFi hacks this year, and we don't see any slowing down. How do you help your organizations, whether it's crypto native or uh, traditional institutions, deal with these risks, manage these risks, and even mitigate the risks? I think the first part is educating them on what the, ris what the risks are. Like smart contract risks, have, we've been talking about that for the last four years, and Every and we, we've also been talking to some of the firms around smart contract audits, or you can call them assessments. There is no standard for smart contract audits. Like coming from a traditional accounting firm, we when we say audit, it's a very serious term. And some of the smart contract audits that we see on these, you know, GitHub's and these are one-page reports. That's not how an audit's supposed to be. So, really educating the institutions on what these risks are, what the vulnerabilities are with these smart contracts and just recognizing them and you know, having a portfolio allocation accordingly. So you consider all those risks. There are risks in traditional space as well. Right. It's how do you count for those risks and for the allocation that you're putting in, in DeFi. So thinking about those areas is, is gonna be critical for a lot of the institutions as they try to come into the space. But I mean, I, I do feel overall DeFi, it is a better infrastructure. It's a much more efficient infrastructure there are risks, especially in a smart contract world, but we've got to see how we can address that. But I, at the end of the day, I love how the community comes together whenever something like this happens. So for every attack, we've seen that happen when the community comes together. That's awesome. I'm going to stay on the smart contract risks. Alex, what are you seeing from the smart contract from the technical sense? What are you seeing that can be better done 
by a lot of these NFT or DeFi firms to protect themselves. So what I've seen with the smart contract, there are some companies who are injecting themselves like in the ERC-20 smart contract. So they are able to block the smart contracts in case someone hacks the system, they just freeze the entire uh, movement of the assets. So that's one approach. But I think it's very important what you mentioned before with the consumer protection technologies, because if you are able to create an engine that is able to distinguish between, between a fraud uh, and a scam and something that is legit, I think it's important to inject that and automate in a middleware that it's able to act as a shield for the user. So even though he's not aware and he's making a mistake, you are still there with him. You can protect, you can drop the transaction for him and give him a warning, hey, this is a scam, you know, you maybe you should uh, look twice. Are you sure you want to do this transaction? So I think that kind of approach also works. But in depth, I think coming back to what you said, audits should be to be done in depth, right? And not one pager that just assess some of the public uh, functions that are exported to a smart contract, right? Awesome. Now, we know if you're dealing with crypto native companies, they're going to knock on your door and they're going to see what the loopholes are in regulations. What are some of the trends or maybe the things that crypto companies don't know that they need to know as they're going through some of these regulatory processes, especially in Canada with the new rules and regulations? I would say, I mean, we've been working with custodians, exchanges, uh, and, and a lot of other folks that are building NFT platforms or security tokenization platforms and marketplaces. And a lot of these institutions, they're coming at, a lot of these people mostly come from a, at a technology standpoint. You've got to also look at it from a business standpoint and then look at how the traditional w way of doing things were. What about the risks in the traditional space? Are you addressing those risks in the new frontier as well with the tokenization, with the crypto asset space? And I think that's where I would say a lot of the portion of our, of our discussion goes in. When we talk about the maturity in the processes and policies and risk management frameworks across these crypto native institutions, we see that there is a lot of room for improvement for them to be able to meet with what the institution requires them to do. So I think that's an area, their policies around access, policies around change management, having even like formally defined risk management frameworks to, to see how they're addressing and identifying and managing those risks. The regulations are one thing, but at the end of the day, the institutions are the DeFi regulators, because if you don't meet their needs, you're not gonna get access to the banking and the partnerships that you need. Is, you talked about NFT marketplaces, Alex. Is there anything that NFT marketplaces should be worrying about when it comes to MEV and sandwich attacks or a flash bot? What should they be worrying about to protect their consumers that are engaging with their smart contracts and platforms? Yeah, so we have been seeing some attacks in terms of front running, even NFT. So even though it happens in the DeFi world with a classical front running, it also happens with front running in NFT, right? So I think it's important for these marketplaces to put there at least inform the actual users that have an option to enable a front running protection such that they are able at least to to inform and educate their users that they should be very careful when choosing a specific slippage parameter on a DeFi trade. Awesome. Now, let's, lastly, talk a little bit about KPMG. They're not known for digital assets. They're not known for that world. They're very tra traditional <laughs> firm. Tell us a little bit about some of the innovation going at KPMG. And you've been in this space for a long time. How is the community growing around KPMG? And what are some of the things that you're seeing for maybe your customers that people should be looking out for? Um, I would say so. Our customers are the three players that I mentioned, right? Like, But at a personal level, the entire crypto asset and blockchain center of excellence, we're all part of the community. We've been working in DeFi. We've got our leadership transacting with Ledger wallets. We've been like, the Wallet Women is also held in our Gnosis multi-sig wallet. So we have our leadership that can transact with MetaMask, can transact with Ledger. So we got them to buy in to ju not just the, the initiative itself, but the future that we all believe in with crypto assets. So our leadership at KPMG is now half DGEN, I would say, like like we're, we call ourselves as full DGEN, but we would call them as like half DGENs. And it, it's, it's been a long, it's been a very fun ride to get them on board. And a lot of those questions that they asked about why Bitcoin? Why Ethereum? Right? Why NFTs? And and also beyond that, what's next? That's where we are at now because they they were they got super excited about us adding Bitcoin and Ethereum on our treasury. They got super excited and involved in the NFT purchase, and now they're coming up to us and saying like, what do, what are we doing next? What's next in the in the Web three? What's next in Metaverse? What's next in NFT? So we we we've got a lot of stuff go, going and growing. In, in the works, in the background, but uh, hopefully we can be able to make some announcements soon. <laughs> We're waiting for those announcements. Alex, before we go, 
Talk to us a little bit. You're crypto native. How are you attracting institutions or maybe large scale wallet service providers or exchanges that can benefit from using your protocol to have a little bit more privacy and compliance with their customers? Yeah, so I think it's very important to touch their uh, pain points, right? So it, we are targeting wallets, we are targeting different kind of entity institutions or who have a large user base. Because if you talk directly with the CEO or the legal executive, they understand the uh, the legal risk that they carry on in the face of the regulator. So I think it's really important, uh, the stakeholder which we are talking to, it's very important for them to understand. And it's also providing education for them as well to create a context. So you need to speak their language. I think this is the baseline. Guys, this has been an amazing conversation. We got the happy hour starting soon, so we got to finish up now. And hopefully next year, our futurists, we can continue the conversation and talk about huge announcements from both companies. Thank you so much, Kunal. Thanks, Alex. And Thank back you. to the conference.